Does your garage look like this? Overstuffed and unsuitable for projects? Is this what your typical storage unit in your garage looks like? Did you get it from here? Did you pay way too much money for it? Did you look at all these ready-made garage storage systems and think, hmm. Not only are they limited, but for the price they're charging, we could just do something ourselves. Do you know what I can build for all the money they're charging for all of that? For pennies on the dollar, I could build something way better. If you're a DIY enthusiast, you're all about making your garage more efficient, more usable, more productive, and better for you. This video is all about showcasing how you can do that from varied levels, whether you want it simple and plain, to more extravagant and way more bling. From simple to advanced, whatever you want, your jaw will drop after making something like this for pennies on the dollar, literally. So this is the budget that we're working with. It's really not a lot considering that if you tried to buy this fabricated from the store, it would cost you way more money. Uh, we're gonna be able to complete this with simple pieces of plywood, some 3 8 plywood for the sidings, so 3 4 plywood for the shelves, a bunch of 2 by 3s to make up the initial frame and the divots for the shelves, and a bunch of junk from my backyard that I've been hoarding for a project like this. We're also gonna be using aluminum face frame, so we'll be using a different series of heart of fasteners these are some of the fasteners we're looking at to tie the wood frame together. We'll also be using metal last screws and rivets, but the aluminum face frame is optional. You really don't need it. It's actually much cheaper to not use it, but because I want this project to pop and it's going to be in videos constantly, I want it to have a, a kind of a bling to it. This is going to be the first of two side storage systems that are going to fit seamlessly underneath the garage doors. The garage door can go up and down seamlessly, but it's going to be out there stacked above it so there's no way that the thing can tip over in the event of an earthquake and it can actually have some additional shelves up there using basic tools that you can get anywhere from walmart all the way to the big box department stores we're going to be able to put this together using a drill a driver a circular saw and just a few other things first we need to make the initial wall this is the most important part of the project Figures we're using needs, two four by eight sheets a three inch inch thick build it. And we're just going to be seaming them together with the 2x3s in key sections to make them hold together. We're framing them around the side. This doesn't have to be initially very strong. It's going to be very flimsy, but as we box the frame together, it solidifies and it becomes very rich and flexible. So in fabricating this wall, I just have a rough idea of what it is in my head. I don't have any blueprints or schematics. I just know what it needs to accomplish. So when we fabricate the next wall, uh, we get past some of the barriers we had in Foresight to this, but they both still work pretty seamlessly, as you'll see. But once we have the frame in place, all we have to do is just flip this thing over and then secure the panels all the way around with a bunch of little one inch uh, tapered screws. Once that's done, we're going to actually stick it in here. It's going to slide right underneath the garage door. So it'll be higher than the garage door itself on the initial wall. And because this is flimsy and raw right now, we're framing the bottom floor. We're going to use a little brace there just to hold them together symmetrically at a 90 degree angle while we get the rest of the stuff in place. Put a short beam in there. And that will be enough really for the floor. We're not going to put anything substantially heavy on this floor. It's very short. We just got to make sure it seams upright. Now we seam up the top. My family is in and out of this video, just so you know, FYI. All the child actors, either their faces were covered up or they were old enough in here to not violate any of YouTube's policies. And though projects like these are universally meant for anyone, this is not specifically made for kids. There, now that that's out of the way. As we continue to box in and frame in pieces, the entire structure becomes very rigid and inflexible. The key here is to make three actual sections. One for sort of a hazmat storage to store all the spray paint and the primer and the epoxies and anything else that falls into that category. That will be there on the right side. The middle side will be a section that fits awkward tools, tools that I can't fit anywhere else, tools that are, are, there's really no good place in your garage to put them. And then the last section will just be a very, very big storage. For things that are always in the way and bulky, but I do need fairly frequent access to. We're gonna make shelf systems and everything else for it. In fact, the roof shelf 
which we're cutting out right now, that will be additional storage. Because right behind that garage area, there's a little specific section you can fit really oblong items. And that'll be perfect for other stuff that I need. Just make making sure it tests and it clears properly, and then we can secure that panel. The real strength of this whole shelf really relies a lot on the plywood sheeting itself. The studs are just in there to make a base frame for the shelves and for other things. So we spent our time securing all the plywood sheets to the studs to make this in. Some of these studs, so we can get the full strength of the screw, we use screws longer than the studs. We'll be cutting those ends off later. And for the shelf supports themselves, we're just using some of the recycled 2x3 pieces that uh, we're going to have to get rid of anyways. Making sure they're level, we can now cut all those end screws off. I had scrap 3 fourths plywood in the back of my yard that I was just saving for a project like this. That's why you see all the residual paint on. Uh, the 3 force plywood is going to be very, very sturdy and it doesn't need any additional under supports. It's very strong by itself, especially for a span like this. This is an idea that came to me later on as we we're doing it on how to face frame this to make it look awesome later. But before that, we're going to cut off all the shelves and eventually we're going to preserve this entire unit with oil-based enamel to saturate all the pores in the wood and make sure that no liquid or any other sort of solvents or chemicals can actually seep into the wood and degrade it or cause it to smell over time or rot. The next step here, we're going to give it a gray finish. Rustoleum, smoke gray, gloss, protective enamel, oil based. Stuff works wonders for my other projects, and I just like the gray finish. It's more of a shop finish versus more of a, ooh, look at me, I'm a woodworker finish. Clearly, I'm not a woodworker. My son jumps in here to help me paint. I told him to wear clothes he didn't care about getting ruined, so he's wearing some, like, odd, like, clothes from, like, Christmas time, if you're just wondering. This paint, um, you can reduce it if you want to get it even thinner and soak into the wood even more. But the plywood we're using is porous enough to where it's already going to soak in most of it during the first initial coat. We're going to be running two coats over it, or as many coats as needed until um, you don't have any residual soakers and you have like a fairly even layer on top. And so that'll take anywhere from two to three coats. The plywood generally soaks in a lot more where there are not, but it's fine. Right now this is finished and this is actually really nice. I could stop right here and be happy. This didn't cost very much money at all to get it to this far, and this will accomplish everything I need. We're going to face frame this later with aluminum, but right now we're going to start making brackets for all my awkward tools. I have a very big bandsaw, my sawzall, and you know a few other things, circular saws, stuff that doesn't really fit very well in anything. We're going to make hangers for all those things. And that's really what this middle section of this storage system is meant for. A gentleman named Bob found me one day and gave me some scrap aluminum. And this is gutter material that he gave me, and this is what I used it for. I thought it would make perfect holders for batteries and for bit boxes, and the residual hang of the gutter will hang oblong tools that have a belt clip. This is 1 16th inch angle aluminum. This is where the project kind of gets expensive, but it's, it's really needed for what I do, especially for the kind of things that I fabricate on average on my channel. This is pretty expensive if you just buy it um, from Lowe's pre-cut or from Home Depot pre-cut or any hardware store is gonna sell it much more expensive than you can get from a metal shop. You can literally get it for two or three times the length 
and bulk for the same price. So we went and bought this at a local metal shop here. We're grooving and slotting it in specific sections. The aluminum is thin enough to where we can bend and break it with a plier. And we can slot it around the wood studs so it'll fit in seamlessly. Remember, this is just a face frame. It doesn't actually add any structural rigidity or integrity to the shelving system itself. So all, it can just be very thin aluminum. The thinner the aluminum, generally the more inexpensive it is. So we're gonna be running these angled uh, sticks and we're gonna be running 0 0.025 aluminum sheeting. That's the thinnest sheeting that I could find in scrap pieces. If you look around a metal shop, they should generally have scrap pieces of aluminum around that they'll sell for you versus having to buy a full sheet. You can get really crazy and just buy really thin sheeting and sheet the entire thing so it looks completely aluminum. We could have done that, but we just wanted the initial face to look the way it did. I think the actual aluminum slash gray finish with the paint really did a pretty good wonder on it. That's a Rex bit, like a nibbler. It's got a little mini nibbler in there. I ended up using the shears because I got a straighter cut, but the nibbler was pretty cool. Exciting. That's what I was cutting here. GoPro cut out but we just really boxed it in like we boxed everything else in and put that sheet in the inside. Got the logo there, gonna get some other custom logos for people. Pretty sweet. Some of the other items that Bob donated to me was this, I don't even know what it was, but it was nice and it was painted and I thought it would make a really good basis for a shelf for like drill and driver storage or any sort of other oblong storage that will fit these brackets and grooves. I've also seen people just cut large PVC pipes in a section and screw them to the inside, and that also works. I just really wanted a shelf. We're using a bimetal hole saw and the appropriate stuff. I used my drawings as a template, clearly I didn't go by what I thought because I felt I could fit more in. Don't worry, we get that we get that marker stuff off later with acetone. Just a few more brackets and rivets from the same stuff we use the face frame in, and it's all set. It actually holds my drills and drivers really well, and holds a bunch of other tools later on that I found out that you wouldn't expect. With a few other things, we're ready to load this thing up and use it. Vastly favorite over my current storage. The areas for my pack out stuff. You know, large totes that are holding some more of my bulk materials and then my individual uh, keter boxes. My favorite part of the whole locker and the main reason I built this thing to begin with was my actual like power tool little deal. So I Bill uh, donated some things to me. Thank you, Bill. I really appreciate it. This is what I use from your donations. I hope you approve. These were forever jamming up my floating toolbox. They were just forever jamming it up and I'm so glad that I just it's just kind of a two-for-one special here. I really wanted the gutter mainly to hang 
my, my awkward tools on belt clips, ones that weren't going to fit the holster mod. And they subsequently fit the batteries really nice and all the, uh, you know, the drill and bit boxes really nice. And then I had some bigger tools here um, that are pretty paramount to my whole projects, but they were just bulky and awkward and didn't really fit anywhere in the conventional toolboxes that I bought from the store. And I really just wanted a place to hang them up. I also have spray cans for days for a bunch of different things, a bunch of different types of paints and solvents and thinners and glue and all this stuff was scattered in my garage hopelessly and I and I mean I have toolboxes I mean I got this workbench I got that thing I have another conventional one back here that you know the problem with conventional toolboxes is they're made to fit the general population they're not meant to fit your specific needs so if you really want something to fit your specific needs then you're gonna have to go and build it 